Today we get to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is deviance. It seems a weird thing to be a favorite topic, but I find it to be most interesting. A lot of people think about deviance as if it were solely a negative thing, when actually it can be quite constructive. So what is deviance? Quite simply, deviance is violating social norms. And from what we know of, of social norms from previous lectures and reading, social norms are the rules and expectations of a society. So anyone who breaks any type of a social norm is committing a deviant act. And from what we also know about social norms, if you break a social norm, there's consequences, there's sanctions for what you're doing. So really, the biggest question about deviance is not necessarily what is deviance, although it's important to note that just as all cultures have different social norms and different rules and different expectations and different sanctions, therefore all cultures consider different behaviors deviant. So deviance is a matter of perception and culture. But more importantly and more interestingly than that is why do people commit deviant acts? We know that sanctions aren't any fun, being socially excluded, being punished, being put in prison, or any other variables of consequences that society imposes for breaking a norm. So why would people do it, and what function does it serve? This actually brings us to our first theory, which is a functional analysis or functionalist idea, that deviance itself serves a purpose in society, that it is functional that in fact, it's positively functional. We know that when deviant acts are committed in society, you have an increase of unity, loyalty, and cohesion. That the communities themselves come together around those who have been harmed by the deviant act. And all you have to look for this example is any society or any community that has experienced any sort of a tragedy. After a tragedy, the society comes together and there's this increased level of loyalty and patriotism or nationalism. The second functional thing is that it clarifies our morals. That is, if there is a deviant act that has never been committed by society, society's never had a chance to evaluate and decide if this is something they consider right or wrong, if this is something they consider moral. For instance, Let's imagine there was a pretend society, and this society doesn't exist, but a pretend society where human beings have never killed each other, that no one has ever killed or murdered another human being. In this society, is murder and killing morally wrong? The answer, theoretically, is no, because the society has never had a chance to decide if they believe that killing was right or wrong. So the second functional thing that deviance does is it helps us to clarify our morals. The third, and to me the most interesting thing that deviance does, is it helps to promote social change. Think of it this way. If no society had ever had anyone do anything to break a social norm, how could society have evolved? If no one had ever done anything different we would have remained hunter-gatherers. We would have never done anything to evolve or progress as humanity. A good example of this is the children's movie The Croods, in fact, that in order to move on from being just caveman, Neolithic caveman, you had to have the character who is inventive and ultimately considered quite deviant until they find the purpose and function of his invention. Outside of functional analysis, there's other reasons or explanations of why people do deviant things. One of these is called learned deviance, that those people who are deviant are deviant because they have seen the people in their looking glasses, if we're looking at socialization in the looking glass theory, or those people around them modeling deviance for them. That someone whose family shoplifts will learn how to shoplift. And within their subculture, it will not be considered deviant. But within the mainstream culture, it will be considered deviant. Another reason why people commit deviant acts is a theory that is called labeling theory. 
Labeling theory postulates that people live up or down to the labels that they're given. In fact, this theory is very influential in the concept of mental illness and promotes quite a discussion and a dialogue around is it beneficial or is it ultimately harmful to label someone with a behavioral diagnosis? Is labeling someone with a behavioral diagnosis then giving them impetus, giving them motivation, giving them rationale to continue bad behavior, or is it beneficial for them to access healthcare services? This discussion is ongoing. We do know that people who have been labeled a certain way, even in smaller informal settings, tend to conform to those labels, again, through the looking glass theory. Another theory is called control theory. And control theory looks a little bit psychodynamic. That is, it looks like Freud's concepts of the id, the ego, and the superego. Control theory postulates that human beings have inner and outer controls. And those controls help us, like the superego and the ego, to control our it, to control our primal desires so that we don't act out. And control theory postulates that people do deviant things because either their inner controls or their outer controls are not strong enough. So an example of this would be, for instance, a child with ADHD who gets up and runs around the room. One would postulate in control theory that his inner control chemically is not working because ADHD is a chemical idea. On the other hand, if there is no classroom and there are no seats and there are no desks and the child gets up and runs around, this is because the outer controls aren't there to manage them either. Finally, our last theory, it's called strain theory. Strain theory postulates that people commit deviant acts because they cannot meet their needs legitimately. This is the classic idea of a family who steals food because they live in an area that is too impoverished to provide them with a job to legitimately gain food. There's a whole bunch of reasons why people are deviant. Deviant serves function in society. People rationalize deviance in different ways. And ultimately, people are not going to stop being deviant. I want you to take some time and think about how deviance functions in your society or dysfunctions according to functional analysis. What do you think about this? And what do you think then about the ways in which society attempts to control deviance? Does it work? Does it not work? then I want you to come up with some why questions and come up with your own hypotheses.